from the engineering profession. There is definitely a fundamental role for engineers and engineering in the actualization of all important dimensions and aspects of our plan. We have a target to enhance the contribution of industry by uh, industry to the national um, GDP by 20% by the year 2030. To do this, we shall have to engage in competitive manufacturing on a large scale. Agro-industrial manufacturing, for value addition in particular, is the most viable means of growing our manufactured local products and imports, together with exports. This, in turn, requires a robust capacity to support rising efficiency in every industrial process, or in other words, engineering and engineers. Modern medical technology. Yesterday I was in Kirinyaga, and a lady was taking us around, and she said she was a biomedical engineer. And she persuaded me that she knew what she was doing. That is the space, that is the kind of profession that we need as we roll out our universal health coverage and will require greater investment in state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, Madam, Ann, uh, Madam, sorry, <laughs> Madam Susan Kehika will tell you we have a hospital nearby here. I have discussed with her, and she needs additional equipment to be able to better serve the medical and the health needs of the people of Nakuru County. The affordable housing plan, our Minister for uh, Lands and Housing is right here. That whole ecosystem around our housing plan, from quantity surveyors, structural engineers, um, all manner of professionals in between, we will need them to underwrite our plan on universal access to affordable housing that is part of our agenda for the next five years. Our commitment on ICT and the digital superhighway pillar. I was having a conversation yesterday with Google and um, MasterCard and they were informing me that they need software, software engineers 500, between 500 and 1,000 every year if we were to make meaning of our digital economy going into the future. Again, that is the space we will be working with you on actualizing our aspirations and making sure that we position, not just Kenya, but we position our continent appropriately as a continent of the future. Not only do we need engineering professions to guide the implementation of programs and projects under our plan, but we also have to go deeper. Competitive efficiency is essential for transformation and calls for constant innovation. I mean, the engineer of yesterday, if you don't update your uh, skills, you don't update your qualifications, it is very easy to be obsolete, especially in a, an ecosystem, a world that is evolving uh, at the rate at which we are. For example, I remember having a conversation like, um, I, I think, nine years ago with engineers from the Ministry of Roads, and we were asking them critical questions. And it took us almost a year of argument on how we can deliver our road program, but with a bit of innovation and creativity. Eventually, our engineers came through, and they developed what we eventually called our um, uh, low-volume seal uh, component of our roads. Engineer Mosonik is here. A good uh, engineer, uh, another engineer. What was the name of that fellow from Nyahururu? Mainge. Mainge, Engineer Mainge. I have a lot of respect for that gentleman because together with Engineer Mosonik, we were, we were able to unlock 
10,000 kilometers of road that we have built under our low volume sealed road program. That is what innovation, creativity, thinking out, out of the box can bring on board. And I encourage you as uh, engineers in the profession where you are to continuously innovate, continuously work with others. And I'm happy that uh, um, there is mentorship going on from Malaysia, from other areas, and we are all encouraging and working with each other to see how we can better pro, um, uh, make sure that there is mutual recognition of qualifications, of skills, and of competencies across the board so that we can create a global workforce for all of us. Similarly, our engineers in Kenjin, who effectively benefited from technology transfers in important areas of clean and green geothermal power. Right here in Nakuru, we have the largest, I think in, in our continent, the largest power plants. Again, courtesy of uh, our engineers. I was in Djibouti day before yesterday, and Kengen GDC, our engineers are spreading the technology and knowledge all the way to Djibouti. That is the trajectory as policymakers we want to look at and work with you so that we can create a transboundary um, category of, um, of, of, of human capital that will help build um, infrastructure, whether they be uh, in the energy sector in the road sector, in the transport sector, that can lift our continent and lift our uh, countries into a competitive platform that we can compete with others. These are the most recent instances of encouraging leadership from our engineers. I challenge this esteemed fraternity to go further and implement energy efficient innovations in transport and further improve on e-mobility innovations. Kenya, spend, we spend half a billion dollars, $500 million every month on our petroleum products that we use in our transport sector. E-mobility can actually take that to zero. We can, we can not only uh, innovate around e-mobility, about what we can do with renewable energy. We have huge resources of uh, wind, we have huge resources of solar, and we can power our economy, especially around the mobility space using renewable energy. There is a debate that is going on whether development can be powered by renewable energy. Kenya is an example. 92% of, of our grid is uh, uh, renewable energy, and we are making strides. It is our focus that by 2030, 100% of our grid should be uh, green energy or renewable energy. That is a trajectory because of the effects of climate change that we are all concerned about. These and many other weighty matters, ladies and gentlemen, must occupy your minds and anchor your deliberations as you strategize on ways and means of facilitating members of your profession to exploit emerging opportunities for innovation and make their contribution to the development of our countries, the development of our continent, and as I said, so that we can position our human capital to be global and we can position our continent to tap into the opportunities that come with the space where we occupy today as a continent. Um, I look forward to you giving consideration in your agenda on these very important issues and hopefully to reinforce your critical mandate in education and training by supporting the design, improvement and implementation of the most appropriate national STEM curriculum for our present and future productive and competitive needs. 
I'm very happy that we have mentees and mentors in this gathering, people who are going through uh, the motions to become uh, better professionals. You're also vested with the immense mandate of using innovation as a professional value and entrenching it deeply in Kenya's engineering culture in all sectors, especially in education, research, and even in practice. I make this call for a very considered reason. Engineering is vital for national economic growth and development. The strong relationship between a nation's engineering capacity and its economic development is well documented and established. We are committed to developing an optimal national engineering capacity to support the transformation of our country and to prepare our, our country to position our human capital because we have requests for human capital across the globe. I had an occasion to engage with the Chancellor of Germany. I have had a discussion with um, the President of Canada. I have had a conversation with many other actors in the UAE, in Saudi, and they are all looking for human capital. It is important that professions like you work with policymakers. Let me give you another example. Yesterday, I was having a conversation with our actors who are supporting us with developing our labor, labor for export. And one important aspect was mutual recognition of qualifications. I'm very happy that in this conversation, we are looking at how do we uh, make sure that our region, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, and uh, East, the East Africa, progressively into the African continent, how do we standardize our uh, professional training? How do we make it easier for us to work across the different countries? And how do we even make it easier for our professionals to work globally? It is therefore very urgent for us to use every opportunity to impart necessary skills and competence to learners from an early age, and in fact, all the way from pre-primary to the tertiary level of education. In that connection, I'm delighted to commission, uh, to commission the fourth cohort of the Graduate Engineers interns, Internship Program today. <laughs> the program is designed to accelerate professional training and to cut the time required to qualify as engineers from between seven and 12 years to only three years. In recognition of these needs of, a, of transforming the economy, the government is going to scale up the program from its current enrollment of 120 to 500 trainees in the next financial year. Maybe we should, it is a, a, a good point to congratulate all the interns who are graduating today. Can they stand up, the interns, to what we gave a coffee? Those great people. Congratulations, and we look forward to working with you going into the future. I'm also delighted to witness the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the Engineers Board of Kenya when it happened in Korea um, a few months ago, and uh, the chair of the Engineers Board was there with us. And I want to commit that the government of Kenya is also committed to the delivery of high quality engineering capacity by establishing Kenya School of Engineering that somebody has alluded to. You can count on us, the engineers at the Ministry of, uh, um, at the, at the Ministry of Transport and, uh, and Roads, can use the services of the lawyers in the ministry to make sure that, that all that is put together. We shall therefore support the Engineers Board of Kenya in this endeavor. Mr. Chairman, you can count on my support as we do that. Through the board, we are facilitating total compliance with the highest standards of engineering by building contractors and developers. It should no longer be possible for projects to employ unqualified people or to proceed without employing an engineer altogether. 
qualified engineers must supervise building works from the commencement all the way to completion. And I am happy that now there will be a portal where we can all know who is an engineer and who is a pretender. <laughs> and, and that all projects that are being undertaken, both by government of Kenya or by even the private sector, that a portal will give us who the engineers, who the professionals are, so that we can hold them to account. I expect the engineers board to flag out the people who are not living in accordance with the provision of ethics of your profession. It should be your responsibility more than anybody else before um, the public complain, before other uh, agencies come for your, your members who are acting outside the law or unprofessionally, the board itself should be able to take action. And self-regulation should be the norm rather than the, 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 the exception. Um, I approve and support Kenya's bid to accede to the Washington Accord under the International Engineering Alliance and to promote international recognition of Kenyan engineering programs and qualifications as I commend Nigeria for being uh, admitted today. Congratulations. And you are trailblazing so that the other African countries can follow. I also support the enhancement of global mobility of Kenyan engineers, such initiatives including the recent admission of Engineers Board of Kenya as an affiliate of the World Federation of Engineering Organizations bring our sector to international standard and expose our professionals to international best practice. This is good for Kenya engineering and therefore good for our development agenda. Therefore, should, there should be no doubt about government's commitment in the promotion and development of Kenyan engineering as a decisive component of our development. I encourage you to use this convention to define a clear roadmap for raising the overall engineering standard and capacity and making a catalytic contribution to the development of our country and to the management of our plan. There is so much for you to do, and you must quickly get ready to start working with us. I am uh, grateful that uh, I have this opportunity to talk to a professional body, people who are involved in many aspects of our, of our development. And you can count on, on us as we designed what we consider to be the next plan to live, to get our country moving. All the components that we put in place need the support of professional bodies, need the support of engineers in all their aspects, whether it is our digital superhighway, whether it is our agriculture and uh, value addition and agro-processing, whether it is the component of universal health coverage, and even the component that we are looking at in housing, we will need a whole array of engineering capacity and professionals to support this endeavor as we drive our country into the future. Let me just say one final thing, that as I reflect on what we are doing, I am reminded that in this year's budget, for example, we are spending $5 billion, almost 650 billion Kenya shillings, in our education, in our training, from primary school to university. We must be careful that as we spend this amount of money yearly, we must be careful to think about the output. What happens when all these men and women go through our education, our training, acquiring knowledge, acquiring skills, acquiring competencies, we must equally have a sound plan on how 
they are going to deploy the knowledge, the expertise, the skills, and the competencies they acquire in plowing back and developing our country. And that is why it is important for us to have a plan around jobs, around opportunities for entrepreneurship, around opportunities for doing business. That is as important as the plan we have on training, on educating, on uh, ensuring that we have the best human capital. And as Kenyans, we must continuously reflect on how we, we want to do this and the means by which we're going to do it. I was expecting the engineers of Kenya to support the finance bill. I am surprised you guys are quiet. <laughs> I have not heard your voice. You are the people who are going to benefit from the housing plan. You are the people who are going to implement our super highway. You are the people who are going to implement our universal health coverage. You are the people. <laughs> now, you guys want me to do the heavy lifting, and you want to sit at the end and reap the benefits. That's not fair. I mean, good people. I think we should be in this together. So let me appreciate all of you for all the good that you're doing uh, for our country, your contribution in uh, making sure that whatever we are doing as a country is done professionally, is done in a manner that uh, is sustainable. And I like uh, uh, what your president uh, said about sustainability, making sure that uh, all the aspects of our development. I remember I was having a conversation about the 100 large dams we want to build the 1,000 smaller dams we want to build, and the almost 3,800 ponds and other categories of uh, water harvesting and water storage um, uh, interventions we want to make, engineers will account for a substantial part of it. And I was having this conversation with the people at the Ministry of Water, the engineers at the Ministry of Water, and asking them the same question I was asking Michael Kamau when we interviewed him for the position of CS. I was asking Engineer Kamau then, why must we pay 80 million shillings for every kilometer of paved road? Isn't there another way we can do it, graduated, and we finally found a way? I'm very happy again. When, I, when we engaged the engineers at the Ministry of Water, they have now come up with an innovative, a much more creative way of delivery of our water harvesting infrastructure, our dams and ponds. So there is always room for us to innovate. There is always room for us to be creative. And I want to encourage you to travel that route. I wish you successful deliberations. Look forward with anticipation to receiving a report of your outputs and resolutions. And uh, I'm sure I'll get it from uh, my minister here. And I hope, uh, like all lawyers, you, you will keep to the straight and narrow. <laughs> and you, you will not interpret the report. You will just keep. <laughs> <laughs> I declare the fourth engineering partnership convention officially open. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. One more round of applause for His Excellency. Thank you for those.